ever heard of a guy called Captain Zap? Captain Zap. Yeah. So I was uh, looking at this top hackers of all time list online. Right. And, uh, well, there he was, larger than life. Okay, I'm intrigued. What's the story with this Captain Zap? Sounds more like a comic book character than a hacker. Right. But get this. The real story is way more bizarre than any comic book. Oh, do kill. So Captain Zap, real name, Ian Murphy. He's supposed to be this legendary hacker from the 70s. Okay. The 70s back when hacking was practically a superpower. What do you do? Break into some top secret government mainframe? Not exactly. See, that's where things take a turn from the expected to the just plain strange. We dug into the sources and it turns out this... Master Hacker was more of a master of petty theft. Petty theft. Hold on. Captain Zab, we're talking shoplifting here. You got it. We're talking shoplifting, vandalism, even some weird obsession with Radio Shack. Radio Shack. You'd think a Captain Zap would have his sights set a little higher than a Radio Shack. What was he after? Transistors and jumper cables? Apparently. And here's the kicker. Seems like his parents bailed him out of trouble a bunch early on. Ah, the classic overprotective parents shielding their little hacker prodigy. I'm sensing a pattern here. Right, and maybe that's part of what fueled his, shall we say, inflated sense of self. The guy actually claimed to be the first convicted hacker. First convicted hacker. That's a bold claim. So he was breaking into systems, standing trial, all while bell-bottoms and disco were all the rage. Not quite. His conviction was for fraud and theft. He was selling stolen computer parts. Wait, hold on. Captain Zap, the self-proclaimed first convicted hacker, got busted for hawking stolen computer parts. This is too good. It gets even better. This is where the story goes from amusing to honestly kind of scary. Murphy didn't just fancy himself a tech whiz. The guy claimed he was a CIA assassin, a Navy SEAL, even said he'd been trained by the NSA in information warfare. Whoa, 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 hold the phone. We went from Radio Shack to the CIA in record time. This guy was quite the storyteller, huh? You have no idea, but that's the thing. People bought it. So the question is, how did he pull it off? How do you convince people you're a super spy when your resume reads more like a rap sheet? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Sounds like we've got a master manipulator on our hands. And I'm guessing those manipulation tactics are going to be particularly relevant to our listeners today. You got that right. <laughs> but we're going to have to save those juicy details for after the break. Stick around, because we're about to unpack how Captain Zap pulled off his con and what his story teaches us about spotting deception in the digital age. And we're back, peeling back the layers of deception in the Captain Zap saga. Before the break, we were talking about his talent for manipulation, how he used jargon and intimidation to craft this persona of a tech-savvy mastermind. And it's easy to get caught up in the almost comedic absurdity of his claims. But what's often overlooked in stories like this is the very real human cost of deception. Because for all his bluster, Captain Zap wasn't just conning faceless corporations. You're absolutely right. The sources paint a picture of a man who preyed on people's good intentions, their willingness to help. We're talking about attorneys and private investigators pouring countless hours into his cases, only to discover they were elaborate fabrications. Imagine being so thoroughly manipulated that you devote your time, your skills, to someone who's essentially playing you for a fool. It's a betrayal of trust on a deeply personal level. And it's a stark reminder that con artists, especially those who manage to operate for years undetected, often possess a keen understanding of human psychology. They know how to identify and exploit vulnerabilities, how to leverage people's empathy for their own gain. The sources also mention individuals who lost money to Murphy's schemes. But it goes even deeper than financial exploitation. There's a documented history of violence, particularly targeting women and young girls. Which adds another layer of complexity to this story, wouldn't you say? It forces us to confront the darker side of this Captain Zap persona. Absolutely. It's a stark reminder that charisma and charm can often be tools of manipulation used to mask harmful intentions. Okay, so we've talked about Captain Zap, the con man, the manipulator. But let's bring this back to you, our listener. Why should you care about this seemingly outdated tale of a 70s hacker who wasn't really a hacker at all? Because what Captain Zap was doing back then, albeit on a smaller scale, has become a widespread phenomenon in the digital age. We're constantly bombarded with information online, and it's easier than ever to create a persona to project expertise, even if it's entirely fabricated. It's like that saying, on the Internet, nobody knows you're a dog. Except today, it's not just anonymity we're dealing with. It's the sheer volume of information and the speed at which it spreads. It's easy to see how someone like Captain Zap could thrive in this environment. Precisely. Think about it. 
Social media influencers peddling bogus products, self-proclaimed gurus selling get-rich-quick schemes, they're all tapping into the same vulnerabilities that Captain Zap exploited. The desire for quick fixes, easy answers, the allure of someone who seems to have it all figured out. Exactly. And that's why Captain Zap's story serves as a powerful cautionary tale, a reminder that critical thinking is more important now than ever before. We can't just blindly trust everything we see online, no matter how convincing the source may seem. We need to question, to verify, to cultivate a healthy dose of skepticism, especially when it comes to information that confirms our biases or promises easy solutions. And speaking of skepticism, there's one more detail in the sources that I think perfectly illustrates the dangers of accepting things at face value. It's mentioned that Captain Zap, or Ian Murphy, was committed to psychiatric facilities multiple times throughout his life. And this is where the story takes another turn, prompting us to consider the role mental health may have played in his actions. Right. Because while we can't excuse his behavior or diminish the harm he caused, it does add a layer of complexity to the narrative. It raises questions about accountability, about the line between deliberate manipulation and a distorted perception of reality. And those are questions that we'll explore further after the break. So we're back again, folks. Still knee deep in this whole Captain Zap thing. Yeah, I got to say, what a story, right? We've gone from those crazy Navy SEAL claims to, well... Some pretty serious accusations. No kidding. I mean, last we spoke, we were talking about those psychiatric commitments mentioned in the sources, right? Yeah, and, and it's tricky, right? It definitely throws a wrench in things. Definitely makes you think about culpability, doesn't it? I mean, if this guy was struggling with mental illness, where do we draw the line on responsibility? Right, because we can't just sweep his actions under the rug and say, oh, mental illness, right? Those actions had real consequences. Absolutely. But at the same time, it's not as simple as saying, well, he's a con man. End of story. Exactly. It's nuanced. And frankly, it's a much bigger conversation, the whole intersection of mental health and accountability. Definitely beyond the scope of what we can unpack today. For sure. But what's important for everyone listening is that this isn't about making excuses. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding the bigger picture. Right. Just like we shouldn't buy into the Captain Zap persona, we also shouldn't oversimplify his story. Exactly. It's about recognizing that things are rarely black and white especially these days. And speaking of things being rarely black and white, that kind of brings us to why this whole Captain Zap thing still matters. Couldn't agree more. Because think about it. We're swimming in a sea of information these days, and it's not always easy to tell what's real and what's bogus. And everyone's an expert online. Exactly. And everyone's got an angle, right? So how do we, as savvy consumers of information... How do we protect ourselves? Well, I guess the million-dollar question is, how do we avoid getting Captain Zapped ourselves? The million-dollar question, indeed. And I wish I had a simple answer, some foolproof formula. But the truth is, it all comes down to being vigilant. Question everything. Don't just take things at face value. Easier said than done sometimes, though, right? Especially when we're bombarded with so much information every day. You're telling me. And that's exactly why Captain Zap is the perfect cautionary tale. Because his story reminds us that things aren't always what they seem, that charm and charisma can be just as deceiving as any tech jargon. And sometimes, the most convincing stories are the ones we need to scrutinize the most. Truth. So to wrap things up for our listeners today, if there's one thing to take away from this deep dive, it's that a healthy dose of skepticism is more important now than ever before. Couldn't agree more. Question everything, folks. Verify your sources. And when something seems too good to be true, well... It just might be. Well said. And on that note, that's a wrap on this deep dive into the curious case of Captain Zap. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay skeptical.